Hey guys, welcome to the Do Good Podcast. I am your host, Rob Watson. Before we delve into today's episode, I just want to share a few little things, talk about what's upcoming with the podcast and and who's going to be on it and stuff like that. Well, first of all, it's been a year. It's been a year since I have started this podcast, since I've been sitting down with like amazing, inspiring people who are genuinely are doing good in the world. And it has, it's been a year and it's flown really. And it's it's really interesting, isn't it, when you actually start something and I know that I can be uh, as someone who doesn't really finish projects. I can get really excited at the beginning and get them going and then, you know, a month in or whatever, the excitement runs down and all of a sudden I have another idea and I want to go chasing after that when I think there's a lot we can take out of it, just persevering with stuff and sticking to it, even though the excitement will wane and there'll be times when you feel like not doing it anymore and I'll be honest that's that's come up for me at times during these 12 months there's there's been ups and downs on it but the thing that I've loved at it the core is literally sitting down with interesting people and sharing their stories because I love having great conversations with people so if I've got to able to share it out here with people then that feels good and I'll be honest some of the comments that I've had from people over time some who are friends and some people that I don't know has really made a difference to me. It's really helped to to know that people have been getting out of it and they felt inspired to to do some things, whether it be to, you know, start growing their own food or to take up some form of exercise or to, you know, there's there's loads, there's loads of things here and it's just it is, it feels really good to have that thing and in a way they're the things that kind of keep me going on it sometimes as well as me getting excited about new people to interview. So I'm here to stay. I'm going to continue to put them out. I'd like to be doing them more regular. I'm just going to see how that's going to work um, with my schedule of the other things that I've got going on. Um, but yeah, I, I really do appreciate everyone that's listening. And what I want to hear more from, I want to hear some people, some of your own stories, you know, for one. Do you know anyone out there who you think would be make a great guest? Let me know, you know. Um, I've had this before, my friend Brendan put me in touch with the Curtis family. And that work turned out to be a really good interview. And, and also, it was a really interesting company as well, which is something I'm going to you know, look more into in the future. So let me know on the website. There's a there's a contact page. Send me a message on there. And as well as, you know, I want to hear some of your do-good stories, you know, that are happening in your life or people that you know. It could be in your community, could be in your family, could be anything, big or small. Let me know and I'll... I'll, I'll share them I'll I'll tell you know I'll, I'll give it a bit of a platform on here and and to share that story of what you've been doing because I want what I love to do with this is to build like a bit of a sense of community um my wife Ruth um, came up with a term like the do-gooders and that's what I want to build I want to build a a place and a space for people to be you know for, for you do-gooders and for us to all feel like you know we're, we're in this together and we can make a difference however big small or big so so yeah that's a little bit there and then also I've got some really good interviews coming up I'm going to be sharing an interview with a decluttering expert something I've spoken about in numerous podcasts about you know letting go of stuff and clearing things out and what I've done to my life so it's really nice to sort of speak with a real professional someone who's going out there each week working with people helping them to sort of let go of stuff because it is a it is you know it's a challenge to let go of things. We, It's very much an emotional thing. It's tied into all sorts of different things. So that's a really great interview, uh, which will be coming out. I'm also going to be uh, putting one out with a functional medicine doctor. She's really inspiring. She trained as a, a standard GP. And then after a while of realizing that, you know, that just giving prescribing pills and, and stuff for chronic diseases, it just wasn't getting the results that she needed, that, was, that she wanted to see when in fact people can get amazing results from having shifts in the diet and not just that but looking delving deeper so she became a functional medicine doctor and trained in that and um, that's a really great chat and I think so with both of them there's plenty of great insight and practical knowledge for you to enjoy. So moving on to today's episode so it's titled Honesty is the Best Policy and it was interesting I think when I was coming up with this um that song was popping in my head, you know, sorry seems to be the hardest word. Um, is it Elton John? I'm not sure if it's Elton John. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, fact check that one. And it is, it, you know, it does feel like at times sorry can be, uh, it's a it's a tough thing to say because it's like as if we're admitting that we're wrong and it's it's very much, I think, from, from an ego place of us not wanting to have even made a mistake 
or to have done something wrong that we feel guilty about. Sometimes we just want to like brush over it. Um, but that's when we're delve into this with the, today's episode and, and just talk about that and share some of my own times in life which I've kind of made mistakes and regretted and what I've attempted to do to turn them around in a way and to forgive myself because I think that's what it comes down to. So do you know what's interesting? When I was writing this, I was thinking about it. I was um, thinking about, you know, one of the... Um, remember the first time that I actually lied and I wasn't honest. And you know what? It's funny because I must have only been out six or seven and I'd been... I grew up in a... Um, went to a Catholic church and... I remember going to one of the first times into church and I had to go and do confession. And I can't even remember what I was confessing. It was like, you know, you'd say, you've maybe, oh, I've done this a bit wrong or I've done that. And I just felt really uncomfortable in there, to be honest. I didn't really know what I was asking for, you know, asking sorry for or what I was saying for. But anyway, I came out and I think that the priest said something like, say, say five Hail Murrays or something like that. And I came out and my mum asked me, she said, have you said them yet? I said, yeah, yeah, I've said them, said them. So straight away, as soon as I stepped out of there, I lied because I blatantly hadn't said them. I hadn't done my Hail Marys, but I just lied straight off the back to um, to my mum that I'd done them. Not that she would have been that bothered. She wouldn't, but she was just, um, you know, interested to see if I did. So I've just stepped out of confession. I'm in this holy place and and I've just told my first lie or a lie that I can, I can remember as such. So... Anyway, I'm not, that is definitely not one that I'm bothered about as such. But that's just some like, silly example, which certainly doesn't bring me pain. It actually brings a smile to me. So I actually laugh about that one. But I think there's plenty of times in our lives, and I think we can all reflect on this, where all things, um, when we think about them, they can bring up pain in us still. And it shows that we've still got that quite a bit of a charge around them. And how do we... How do we let go of that charge? You know, and often by us focusing on the past and not in the here and now you know, we can get trapped in them old cycles and be thinking over and over about them. And when actually it doesn't exist anymore, it only exists as a concept in our head and a memory as such. So what can we do, you know, around releasing them charges and, and their memories? Can we potentially go beyond them? You know, look at it from a different perspective, away from the ego itself, and instead from a more higher self perspective, spoken about in recent episodes particularly you know the one with louise k who's spiritual the spiritual teacher and us realizing that the mind can cause us a lot of sort of distress and a lot of suffering and a lot of that thing is old stories that just come up and come up and come up so you know i might as well just get a few things out on the table and share a few things that i may have regretted or done in the past something that i i have i wasn't particularly honest about but really how have i then been able to sort of make up for them so who remembers but the goonies probably one of my favorite films going up from i think it was 1985 on the spielberg's films and we had one of the best characters and it was chunk who was the one that everyone would take it you know, take the piss out of and he do the truffle shuffle and all that. Well anyway, um in the Goonies he um he ends up getting kidnapped by the Fratellis and then they get him and they're asking him so he's gotta tell the truth, he's gotta tell him everything and then he kinda just like spills his beans about everything. He starts talking about every little thing that he's done. So I'm not gonna go into that level of depth with stuff. Um but I am gonna wanna think the reason why I wanna share this now is because one, we've all done stuff, we've all made mistakes. And if we start to realise their mistakes are actually lessons for us, and as long as we're not constantly repeating the same mistake over and over, like for instance, you know, anything that you resist tends to persist. So I think once we learn the lesson, we can move on. And if we can just see them earlier times in our lives, whether it's teenage years or early 20s, that's generally been the time for me when I've had stuff which I have... Um, not been so proud of myself at the time and I've regretted and there's, you know, lots of things have swirled back in mind. And I think for me, going back to about 2012 was when I started to kind of like look closer at this and realizing that I wanted to be a more honest person. You know, I wanted to be more authentic. I wanted to be more real. I didn't want to not be honest to myself because I think really that's what it comes down to. It's just being honest with ourselves of what we want in our lives, where we want to go and what we want to do. So anyway, here we go. Here's just some of the things that, you know, go back. I remember when I was a kid, I was in I was in high school. I must have been about 15 or 16. And we used to do cross-country running. And there was a race on. And we were all on. It was boys and girls. We were all running together. It was all off-road. And I remember us coming down one road. And for some stupid reason, a girl in front of me, who I knew, 
and for some reason I decided to trip I tripped her up now it's a pretty harsh thing to do I mean and you know what the moment that I did it I instantly regretted it she took a tumble um, she ended up like cutting a knee and I ended up just carrying on running past and straight away I was like why the hell have I done that in some stupid moment or whatever, I just like tripped her up. And you know, I'm 15, 16 at the time. And I remember she finished the, the cross the finish line, and she was really like, she was angry with me, you know, really angry as you would imagine that she'd be, you know. And she could have won the race because she was really good at it, and either prevented her from doing it by doing something stupid. Now, I just, re- I actually, it was only, it was, I think it was this year or last year, I actually reached out to her on Facebook, and that's the great thing with social media. Sometimes all these people just scatter everywhere. And what I did is I reached out to her and just sort of like, just said sorry, you know. I basically just said, you know, I've been an ass. And you know what? It was weird, you know, when you kind of broke something, which has been about 20 years, and you think, God, is this just, are they going to think I'm nuts for even suggesting this or saying anything? Can you even remember it? And I just reached out because what I feel like is, you know, whenever we've done stuff like that or things like that that just stay with us, it's like a splinter. It's like, it stays with us like a splinter in our sides. Yeah, I feel like it's more like a splinter in our heart. And each time we can do stuff, it, they can kind of go in and, and then they can go under the surface and then it can be really tricky to pull them out and then you can just be acting a right arsehole all the time. So I reached out to her and I sent her a message and you know what? And she was really nice in response. She's like, oh, what? I can't even believe you remember that. Um, I do remember it, but you know, we were just kids back then. We all make mistakes. So when you get like a response like that, it kind of, it, that's when I'm talking about like releasing the charge of some of this stuff. And since that day, I've not thought about it. It's not bothered. I've literally removed that, the splinter, and it's out. You know, that little black mark, whatever it was, it's out. And I remember sending her, after I got in touch with her, then sent her something in the post, a little gift, some uh, um, chocolate or something, just, you know. And I felt better, I felt better for it. But there's other times when I look back as well, that's things that I've done and, I remember I was a a little bit older and there was a guy that we knew used to hang out with and I remember like lending some money off him and and I didn't pay him back. And I remember for ages after it, he'd say to me, have you got that money? And I'd just make excuses. I'd be like, oh, I'll give it you tomorrow. Um, I'll give it, and it wasn't a huge amount of money, um, but it's very much like the principal at the time that he probably keep on asking me. And after a while, probably after about six months of asking me, he just got sick of asking me, so I didn't bother. Um, and again, at that time, I wasn't really, I wasn't bothered either then. I was kind of, that was my mentality. I wasn't really mature enough or thinking very wisely about stuff or the consequences of things or the karma of things as well and the impressions that you can leave. And it wasn't, I think it was about two or three years ago, I actually seen him um, back back where I grew up. I was back there for the day and I seen him in a pub. We were watching I think they're watching a match or something and he was there and I, I just took the opportunity and I went over to him and we were speaking for a little bit and then I just got this got the money out my wallet and said, here you go, I owe you this. And he, and he was kind of like, what? You owe me this? What, what for? And I'm like, I lent it from you. It must be, what, 17 years ago, 16, 17 years ago. I never gave it you back and he couldn't remember it or anything, but I could remember it. And I could remember these things, you know, and I felt, and it felt really good to give it him back then. And he was like really grateful. So for me, you know, and, and the reason why I'm talking these things, because when I mentioned it was around about 2012 and I just became to become more conscious of things and realizing what the effect that my actions have on other people. And actually, more importantly, the effect it actually has on me as a person and how these things can kind of like eat away at you a little bit. And they just, you know, talking about the thing before with who I'm going to, the lady I'm having, the decluttering professional, this is part, this was a way of me of like decluttering some of my past and letting go of things. So what I actually did is I made a list of kind of the things that have just bugged me that I've done when I was younger. And I just like, I journaled about them. I just reflected on them. Do you know what? It's funny. Once you start, it just it didn't stop I had quite a few pages of of stuff that I was writing down the things that I had done the things that I'd regretted and it's a really powerful exercise to just let that stuff sort of like come out of your mind it's just swirling around comes out down your pen or your pencil onto some paper and it's very interesting when you start to see it there in black and white and you can see it have a different perspective on stuff so I went through this and made a list of all these things that I felt a bit guilty about some could be very considered to be very small others 
weren't were not nice like for instance tripping that girl that wasn't a nice thing for me to do you know that was that caused pain to someone it really did and distress and it probably would have bothered them for quite a while after it and who knows like who knows the impact or the ripple effect that can have on some people so that was in there and and there was plenty of others in there I made this list and that was the first place for me to go and just to kind of you know admit to myself really that I'd, I'd made some mistakes now that can sometimes be enough for people to go you know what I'm going to admit that I've made some mistakes in my life and I'm going to recognize them and I'm not going to make them anymore and that can be enough you know or it could be that you can look at that and go well, okay how can I make some amends to these what what can I actually do for it now sometimes you might not be able to make amends for instance they might not be alive anymore you might not be able to get in contact with them so maybe you do it in another way maybe you do a goodwill gesture in some other cause maybe you give some money to charity maybe you volunteer for something something that you can feel that balance out the energy of what you may have done to them but if you can make direct amends to people um, wherever possible then for me that's worked for me and I've so I'm not going to touch up on some because some of them are some of them are quite quite personal and even though I've been very open and for coming with this podcast I think sometimes maybe I'm not ready just to talk about some some stuff and I think that's the case with all of us but you know there is other things I think I remember another trip and this is this is something that I only really put to bed this year and that was with my auntie um we went on a skiing trip when I was younger and I was around about 20, 21 or something and I got I got really drunk on the on the last day of the trip and we were flying home and I remember having an argument with, with my cousin at the time and it just kind of just like, it was completely over nothing and then it just like snowballed between us and we just both reacted and stuff like that. It wasn't, you know, major and then after it, we were all in the airport and I kind of kicked off a bit in the airport but everyone was there there must have been about we were these, one of these big groups like 20 30 of us and they were kind of like a bit gobsmacked that I kicked off and I felt like I really made a bit of a fool of myself and it kind of stayed with me for ages that and I remember feeling like god you know when it just you know when you do something and it just goes over in your mind for a while and you like you wake up or you think about it and it's like oh you feel feel uncomfortable about it so it doesn't feel good to kind of make a bit of show of a show of yourself and that's what I felt I kind of did in that in that moment. So you know, it was only this year actually, which is this is going. Um, what are we talking? I've got I've got this habit of holding on to things for about fifteen twenty years. I think if we go right back and I spoke about it, in everyone's got a story to tell. When I spoke about you know finding a lump in one of my testicles and finally embracing that and sort of uh, you know willing to face that like 20 years on so I've got a bit of this pattern of kind of doing stuff and then 20 years later kind of like release it or face it and that's what I tended to do with this one and what I did was um it was my auntie's birthday recently so a little thing that I've been doing recently is when I get like birthday cards or stuff I, I make a little personal note of it with this one it was more of a letter and I just kind of just spoke about that and just wanted to say sorry really that was what it was and I wanted to say sorry for the the hurt I might have caused and if it bothered and you know and they got back got back in touch with me and she was really grateful that I'd said that and again it was a little bit like with the lady that I tripped up she was like you know you were just young then we shouldn't beat ourselves up over them things this is what life's part of the process is so them words back from them are very healing you know and even if I didn't hear back from them it's still the process of me doing it has been very healing as, as itself so but yes to hear them words back and just realizing that you know we all make mistakes that's the thing we we all make mistakes in our life don't we and we can end up like holding them like this baggage on us and they can weigh us down over time and maybe sometimes it's just a matter of saying sorry you know and also realizing that thing, you know, I think Jesus said it, wasn't it? You know, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And that's what I'm saying for myself when I was in my teens and early 20s. I didn't know any better, really. I should have, but I didn't. I was not particularly conscious of my actions. I wasn't empathetic. I was not very compassionate. I was just going about my business and and you know living life and 
and that's it. And you know, I wasn't like a pain in the arse all the time and stuff or doing things. But these things build up, and I'm sure we've all done them. And you know, I've got involved in some other stuff as well, which you know you're not really part of, but yeah, you kind of just accept it. And um, that's it. Accepting. Can we accept it? You know, you know, cut ourselves some slack. Tell you know that thing. Telling ourselves that we didn't know any better. And we're young. It's you know it, it's true. And Eckhart Tolle talks about that as well. About you know forgiving ourselves because that's what it comes down to fundamentally is is forgiving ourselves. You know what's really interesting on reflection is that I think um, I didn't realise this at the moment, but some of these actions that I was doing are very much similar to what's on the twelve step program with Alcohol Anonymous. Um, like one of them, I think it's number five, which is admit to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And then number eight, make a list of all the persons we've harmed and become willing to make amends. And then number nine, which is make direct amends to, to such people wherever possible. And I didn't know about this 12-step program, but I was obviously going on my own kind of journey, a uh, healing journey in some ways. I um, it, it was around about this time that I pretty much like really stopped drinking and I wasn't really interested in that as much more and I was really cleaning up my diet and I think when you do that when you start to look after yourself more you can't sort of self-medicate with food and drink and and drugs in the way that you may have done in the past and just sort of numb yourself from things I kind of was allowing these things to come up so maybe that's what was happening to me with these things and you know what it takes strength and courage to admit the truth at times to admit that you're wrong and you know, I think of us a lot of us are afraid of that afraid of being judged afraid of what might happen afraid of being found out but it does it takes courage to admit these things and and to and you know what as well this is some of the best stuff is that when I was saying sorry about some of these things I got such a rush of energy when I decided that these are the this is how I'm going to go about it this is what I'm going to do it felt great you know and once you get a taste of the freedom of honesty you know it's tricky it's hard not to want more of it and letting go of that old stuff pulling them splinters out from us you know it takes such a weight off our mind and we can kind of like move forward you know and take a better path in our life and I remember it's just at that time I was I remember feeling like you know like my future self is willing me on to do these things to let go of the past to to be able to move forward with, without this baggage so there's anything that's ever been bothering you or you feel like you know what it's worth reaching out to someone or then you feel better for it most of the time like in all these instances with me they have come back and they have been like really grateful that I've said sorry they're really like they have not put any blame or had any resentment to it if anything it's just been me holding it on inside of me they haven't been thinking about it and and that's the thing so it's interesting I'm actually started to watch Breaking Bad I'm about half the way through it and I'm completely totally hooked and sucked into it and you've got Walter White who's the the main character who is um uh underachieving science teacher and he's working multiple jobs to sort of keep his family going and in the end he finds out he's got you know a, a terminal illness and he's not got long to live and then he goes on this completely different path and ends up like producing crystal meths anyway I'm sure quite a few people have watched it and I haven't finished it but I'm only halfway through but boy does he tell a bunch of lies and boy does he get himself into a world of trouble thankfully I've never got myself into that much trouble um, and it just makes you think every time you're telling a lie you're just digging a deeper hole and I remember hearing this something recently that if you tell the truth and if you're honest um, you never need to sort of like remember anything. You don't need to, because if you tell a lie, you need to remember the lie, don't you? You need to re remember that, you know, you don't want to, you got to keep it going or you don't want to get caught out on something. So, you know, if you tell the truth, you don't have to worry about that thing. You don't have to worry about being caught. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So, you know, I've shared a few things from here. And again, like it comes back to, I've talked about it, Bashar, in a few episodes you know he really helped me I started listening for 2012 and that was really beginning to like reboot me and change me and upgrade me and make me feel much more positive and alive and all them things you know and what he would say is what you put out is what you get back you know life is like a boomerang you put out good thoughts you'll get good stuff back if you do good deeds you get good stuff back it is what we put out is what we get back so 
that's me knowing this thing and it, it ties into me doing this podcast you know what i feel like i'm putting this stuff out there and i'm getting good stuff back and who knows what it'll open up to and manifest then you know that's what i'm just looking to do to be a more honest authentic human being and i'm not complete i'm not perfect no one's perfect and we'll all make mistakes i'll continue to make mistakes and it's just recognizing them in the moment if i can and to let them go and move on so i'm just going to share a few tips then to be more honest and potentially uh, reflect on things that i may have done in the past i said you know before journaling is a really great way to help get things off your mind and sometimes alone that can be enough just to sort of get something out of you uh, something that you've not been feeling too good about something that you've done wrong it can really enable you to reflect on, reflect on things and and if you wish um What's helped me, I've spoke about it in the past, that I see a therapist and have done for over 10 years. Sometimes I might see them, you know, a couple of times a month. Other times it might be once every few months. I think it's really good for me and able to check in. I think once you've like, you know, reflected on some stuff and you, you've got something that's coming up for you and you want to get it out, it's a great opportunity for you to sort of like sit down and talk to someone. And that's why I think a therapist can help because it's someone who can give you the full attention and it's going to be non-judgmental as you share what you're going through. And they're, in it, they're trained to listen and trained to sort of respond in the best possible way. And, and that can be a really key point for you. When you're looking to open up, share something that has been inside of you for a while, you want to potentially do it. Well, you do, you want to do it in the best possible way. After that, if you feel like you need to sort of repair some old relationships and some you've made some mistakes in your life, then can you reach out to that person and make some amends and you know that can be you could send them an email you could ring them up or maybe next time you see them and and it's your call on them it's like sometimes like some of the stuff that i've kind of spoken about and apologized for i i wouldn't at the time felt comfortable saying it to them face to face so i'd I'd write in a letter or i'd write them an email or send them a message but other times I've seen them face to face and I've just, you know, come out of it and just said it there. And, and that's actually the place when I've actually given me the greatest comfort because you can see the emotion in the face. You can see the reaction and and it kind of just helps it things even more, you know. But also, you know, sometimes it's not possible to actually get in touch with them for whatever reason. They could have passed away. They could be in a different country. They could be, they could not want to speak to you. Who knows? Well, in this case, you can even just still write a letter but you don't have to post it to them. Just writing that letter to them and just saying sorry, explaining where you were in your life at that point and why you did the things that you did, it can be really healing just you doing that. And you could potentially just rip it up after it and throw it in the bin, or you could light it and throw it in the fire. Another good way of just like releasing things, you know, and letting it go. And, you know, another the tip, you know, which is just accept that we're not perfect. We're, we're here to live and learn. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make tons of mistakes. Some people have made absolute whoppers and some are complete, you know, very little. But at the end of the day, you know, as long as we learn from stuff, I think we all deserve a second chance. We can all <clears throat> move forward in our lives. I know that some people who have who've done some pretty horrendous things and will be in jail and stuff and how they've their road to redemption and how they've healed some own wounds and like what a transformation that is i think that's what we're here for you know to transform stuff and the, the key really is maybe to be more honest with ourselves and to and to own up and and that's it you know and i think i just want to last thing that i want to say is you know at the end even though me reflecting on the times of me reaching out to people even though it really helped me to go out and touch with them in the end what it comes down to is like is forgiving yourself and accepting yourself and accepting that we're a human being who's going to make mistakes and to give ourselves a break at times and to just know this is what it's about and we can let go and that's what forgiveness means forgive means to let go of stuff and to be okay with things some fact there's forgiveness for others you know when people have done stuff to us that we can feel really bad about and angry about can we give them the benefit of the doubt as well it's a two-way street here you know we know that we've made mistakes it's completely entitled for other people who are going to make mistakes as well and 
cut them some slack as well and realised who knows what they were going through at that time. I know some of the times when I've made some mistakes early on in my late teens, nearly 20s, I've not in a good place. I was holding on to a lot of anger. I was holding on to a lot of um, anxieties and, and trauma from certain events. So I was never going to be I was never going to react sometimes in the best possible way. And when you add in drink and drugs, in my case, that tends to be the place where I, I kind of wouldn't be myself. I would just act out and I'd do things that I wasn't proud of and regretted. So you never know what someone else is going through, whether they're in a bad relationship at the time or someone's really hurt them or they're going through a divorce or they've just lost a job. We never know what that other person's going through. So if we can reframe it in our mind to say, they're not perfect, it's okay, it's not about me, it's never personal, um, it never is, so that's it, you know what, I'm going to leave it there for today, I hope that you found this interesting, I'm going to continue to be doing, you know, these solo episodes from time to time, so I'm going to continue to do these for the future, and if you guys have been with me since the beginning for the past 12 months, thank you for keep listening, if you're a new listener, welcome, and if you enjoyed this podcast, please share this with a friend. If you listen to it on Apple, leave me a review. That would be amazing. And like I said at the beginning, if you've got any good, do good stories, things that you've done personally or people that you know, get in touch, send me a message through the website on the contact page and I'll do my best to share some of these messages and, and get them out there, you know, so we can share more stuff out into the world. So anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Until next time, have a good one.